Welcome to another Café Rollist and we are joined by a early supporter of the Rollist podcast. Hello Gary, how are you? Hello, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Been a bit locked, caged in like an animal at the moment, but I'm good, surviving. Yeah, uh, we all, uh, Federica was with us a second ago, but uh, she, she's taking care of your yeah, little yeah. one. Oh, there she is, <laughs> back with us. Yeah. Hello, Federica. Could you, the two of you, introduce yourselves to the people who might not be familiar with you two and Roleplay Heaven? Um, I'm Gary Harper. Um, I am the operations director of the Roleplay Haven. Um, I'm also the uh, operations manager for um, Mindjammer Press as well. Uh, a few other RPG companies as well, too. So um, I'm pretty much a freelance consultant for. RPGs uh, companies. And I'm Federica Mertello. I um, am a former branch manager for the Roleplay Haven. I'm currently, let's say, on maternity leave, but I will get back into helping the Roleplay Haven as soon as possible. We do give maternity leave, you see, at RP Haven. We're, we're kind of like that. <laughs> but I, guess, I guess it's not the worst time to be in quarantine. Why yeah. Do... But yeah. oh, I don't know. I don't think it's ever a good time for anything. Yeah, yeah. And, but uh, we, we've got a son here who's scooting around a little scooter, going ballistic, and we can't tie him out inside a flat. We want to take him outside to the park at the moment. He hasn't really seen much of because he's six months old. He hasn't been out much since he's been born because of this whole lockdown. So the so the inside of your house is, is it, it's his whole world. That's the the thingy thing. The, the word is this limited is the word to. to him, yeah. yeah, so far, yeah. He, he goes to one end of the kitchen and he's like, I've never been that far away from in that corner of the world. <laughs> to him, that's the end of the world. Like, wow, the end of the kitchen, this is awesome. <laughs> Lately, he developed an obsession for the dishwasher as well. So, whenever we want to keep him calm, we just open the dishwasher and he's like mesmerized for half an hour. <laughs> so sparkling. Uh, I've got uh, yeah. a couple of ice-breaking questions. My first one is, uh, did the, the self-isolation, uh, what's your routine like? What's well, routine? <laughs> if you have any. Depends on Lorenzo's routine, but yeah, we normally have a bit of a morning playtime. Then we try to make him sleep. Then we have some more playtime. <laughs> Watching TV, reading books. I think at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're quite heavily focused around our son at the moment, trying to do a lot, keeping him entertained because he's stuck inside, as well as trying to do uh, day well. And Fed's not at work at the moment because what's, it, what's that scheme called? Uh, for low. So she's on for low. And um, we're still trying to run the RP Haven. So there's a bit of RP Haven work done because we've gone all virtual. <laughs> And we've gone on to Discord, so we've got like a, a virtual branches that are all going off so people can still do the game. So there's a lot of work still going on in the background for the RP Haven and working remotely for some of these uh, companies like we're working on Mindjammer Press's new website at the moment. So people to get PDFs and things. Cool. So trying to do that, juggling, staying disciplined at home, not easy. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's tough. Some people go, it's easy staying at home, but... It's I think it's working from home. It's tough. It's sort of why I asked that question so we can sort of all share are we dealing with the situation the best we can. Uh, the other ice-breaking question I had is um, did you pick up any new skill or hobby uh, due to self-isolation <laughs> beside uh, changing nappies? <laughs> See, I was going to say that. <laughs> I've learned how to change a nappy. <laughs> Uh, one-handed, one-handed nappy change. Nice. The other hand making a bottle. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's... I'm developing new baby recipes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's all uh, fo a lot focused around Renzo, but I am happy to say I'm managing to go back to reading, which I didn't have much time to do before. So that is a plus. Cool. What have you been reading? Oh, I'm currently reading, what's the title? The Time Travel Guide to Medieval Ages. Cool. I'm on page five, so, <laughs> so far it's interesting, but I cannot tell much about the book at the moment. 
Uh, any uh, any already good stuff to put in a role playing game between page one and five? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It it started with a very nice um, first impression of you walking into 14th century Exeter. So it's it's it it is interesting. It has a lot of potential. So I'll hopefully go through it quite quickly. Actually, um, a friend of mine brought it for me. I like uh, to get a lot of resources, particularly uh, one of my hobbies is history, medieval history. And he got it for me as a resource to use in role-playing games. And um, I was running at the time Vampire Dark Ages, a huge, long campaign. Uh, it was my birthday, and it, James Desmond, uh, the former director of the RP Haven, And uh, he got it for me, and it, it was very useful. There's lots of good little sections and resources you can use um, during your role-playing game. And if you're a bit like me, when I try and run a role-playing game, I like to base it on saying historically correct, particularly Vampire Dark Ages. So correct as possible with that twist of vampirism in it and with the whole culture of vampire in it. And it, it makes it easier to visualize when you're working with your players as a GM to give them something in history because... You know, most of it, most people know, so you don't do some obscure one. And then if you do, you're almost using it like a educational method to teaching your players. This actually happened in history, apart from the bit with the vampires, of course. Yeah. It's, I was having this discussion yesterday on a Discord channel, actually. Uh, I find it, I find tabletop role-playing games are one of the best medium, if not the best medium, to explore history. Yet a lot of people are... A lot of role players they they're a bit averse to to play in this kind of settings because they I think there's two aspects to it. They're afraid of uh, not necessarily. Well, on one hand, you, you get the question of historical accuracy, uh, which is a problem twofold because you sort of have an opposition between the people who try to enforce what they consider accurate, which might not be because only in a very very limited cases uh, usually game masters are not historians and on the other hand you got people who feel um, yeah they feel constrained by, by that they, they like, it's a, even had that with Star Trek actually people saying I don't want to play in Star Trek or I don't want to play in history because I cannot change the world which I find a bit weird because even in Dungeons and Dragons you don't change completely the world across one session, you, you don't end up killing the king session too. Uh. I, I kind of find that's quite interesting what you said because with I, I like Star Wars quite a lot, the, the role-playing game, like Fancy Flight, and, uh, but I find it quite intimidating because you, you do find that when you come across a, a die-hard fan, that when you start it's saying, and they came from Tatooine, and they go, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. that guy did not come from there. Go, no, 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 I'm the G I'm GM, so this is fine. This is what's happening. Go, no, 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 no. So you, you do get those type of fans that really do push you and say, no, you, you, you can't do that. And I find that with Star Trek as well. It, it can be quite hard where people are pushing it. And I I think when you're doing something in history, you know, and you're setting your, your rules down, you've got to obviously set it right at the beginning. I guess this rule comes as we did in Star Wars. Go, look, I'm not a buff. This is, I don't know the ins and outs. I am changing things. I'm setting my foundations down now so you understand it before we play the game and get everyone's agreement in there. And it, it helps. But with the history part, you're not trying to be accurate. You're saying, I'm basing it on this. Of course, it's not going to be accurate because there's vampires in it, for example. So it's, it's never going to be true. And usually find that's okay. It's quite cool when... I mean, I like listening to, to history podcasts and some of them are very good at, you know, showing how we've got a distorted view of history, you know, f through watching TVs and or even stuff which we consider like normal because they're just part of how we feel about things. Like, like time, for instance, there's a, there's a show I really like it's called Oh, It Began by Brad Harris. And each time he takes one thing, one invention. So there's one about money, there's one about refrigeration, there's one about dogs. And he, he's got this narrative explaining how this thing came about through history and evolved. But you got stuff like 
uh, time. And people, when we play a role-play game, we still think, well, we'll meet, we spend two hours in the dungeon, then we come out. And actually, if you were in medieval ages, you don't know what an hour is. You know, you 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 don't think like that because there was yeah. no, uh, there were solar uh, clocks, but they, they were not. Yeah. yeah, they were not used like like we consider. We 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 think the past is oh, they just have solar clocks instead of yeah. having uh, electrical one. But uh, when you in Brad Harris, for instance, he explains how um, in the time of the Roman Republic. Uh, you know, you've got the, the English Parliament, and they say, okay, at lunch, they're going to have this debate, and then an hour later, there will be the second debate on the other topic, and then the third debate, it will be at three hours, and so on, and people know when to show up for what and what debate. And mm. in the Roman Republic, it was, well, everybody shows up, all the Parliament, you are supposed to show up at uh, noon, when the sun is at the highest, and then you go first, you go, sec you go second, you, got you go third with your debate. But there's no set length or time. You, you, you just need to be there the whole time. You, you cannot organize your work in sequence or say, oh, I'm going to be waving this fabric. It's going to take me two hours and then I hand it to you and you can sew it together. Because people don't think like that. They, they, their scale of time is the precision of their days, half days rather than to the minute or the half hour like we are today and it when you start to imagine playing accurately a historic thing to the you know to the most you could be it it would be so weird to yeah to put yourself fully in the mindset of someone from the past but it's still exciting i find i guess it depends on how you're running it as a gm though to yeah. be honest and what, what you're trying to achieve um i don't think you should be able frightened to doing it though diving in i mean there's so many periods i don't know about and just look on the wiki page half the time and get a good general summary i don't read the whole details get a summary create that skeleton out that shape of the skeleton and then you're using the players to flesh out that skeleton you, you, because if you go into too much details you've got that risk that you're going to railroad the game yeah, and you're and, railroading. The player's not in control. And, and people are often afraid of that. And also, even even if it was not railroad, you just there's there's just too much information to process. You you come to a halt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from my experience playing D and Ds or kind of history based games, the the best way I found it working was. It's afternoon. It's morning. The sun sets, so it's coming into evening. <laughs> without getting a set time, leaving it more vague with, with the rotation of the sun, with the sunlight, it's it's the best way to set a game as well, because it gives you that vague idea of what part of the day it is without going too much into details and causing problems or something like that. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem. I just find it it's it's telling how it's so part of our daily life. Hello, Lorenzo. Hello. Oh. You're, Who's you're a Twitch you're streamer now. Everyone. You're, you're online. Yay. This is your first time. I guess <laughs> coming uh, coming back since it's May the 4th and you mentioned Star Wars, uh, I think what's interesting with canon in Star Wars now, there's so much content and there's been also so much uh, debate. I mean, you know... Uh, <laughs> People have different tastes, and since there's so much content, it's it it at some point even if everything had had a, the same quality or intent, uh, there would there would be people who like better some parts of others. So I find the advantage of Star Wars now is that taking from this negative that we are sort of splintered among the fans of about what we like and what we don't like. When I start a session, I say. This is my canon, and in my canon, those movies apply. This movie doesn't apply. This movie might apply partially, but all of this other part never happened. And it sort of set the scene from the start saying, uh, and it's not about judging people for liking this show or this movie, but it's just saying, okay, uh, this universe here is, is set in a bubble. It's my own head canon. You're playing in my head canon, and we, I'm sharing this head canon with you. And you're gonna influence it, 
but uh, the stuff you've seen in uh, in the prequels, for instance, they did not happen. So I guess it's kind of freeing a bit. It sort of protects you from uh, the low ruler, canon ruler fan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you said um, Star Wars made a fourth be with you today. Typically, this day I always try and run, um, you know, or run or play in a Star Wars game. So I'm a little bit gutted with this whole uh, this whole lockdown at the moment. I'm not going to be able to do it. So probably going to have a bit of a Star Wars marathon later. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> but she's not a Star Wars fan. Can you believe it? Oh. She's not even watched one episode of Star Wars. Really? One. Wow. No, no. A geek who hasn't seen it. Um, <laughs> my concept of I'm not into sci-fi unless it is Blade Runner style. I just tie it so she can tell you that. Well, Star Wars is... So, unless it's apocalyptic, rainy, dark, is not my kind of sci-fi. <laughs> I, I, yeah, the, the thing, someone was commenting today also about comparing Star Trek and Star Wars, and I was always annoyed with that because Star I Wars... don't do that. Star Wars... It's, it's, I mean, I, I get I'm, it. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about that too. It's, yeah. it's, it's very frustrating. It's always... Uh, people have to compare it. They're completely different. It's like they they also the big chat that they used to do years ago was uh, all cube against the enterprise. Uh -huh. Why? Why do we need to do this? <laughs> Why do we need to go there? You know, they're, they're completely separate. You just said ball you... cube versus the enterprise. I guess you meant Death Star against the enterprise. Oh, sorry, Death Star. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> Death Star against the enterprise. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, one is a science fiction show and the other is space opera. I mean, I don't want to be nitpicking, but Star Wars, it's not science fiction. It's space fantasy. And well, that's that's another topic. What's true true sci-fi? You know, well, so I don't even you're right. mean as Star true versus untrue sci-fi. I don't mean even as true versus untrue sci-fi, but it's just, I mean, the force and magic... Are such a big part in Star Wars, and and science is never there's no there's no scene when you see scientists explaining stuff in Star Wars. Things sh show up because they they need it, like they would in a medieval fantasy setting. And it's not a criticism. I just find it's 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 the way it feels. It's not. Yeah, it's it's like Star Trek. It's not cyberpunk. <laughs> it's, it's science fiction. And Star Wars for me, it's well, not science fiction. It's uh, it's space opera. Well, they, they have their blag, don't they? When they can't come up saying scientific inertial dampness, for example, that's their big blag in uh, Star Trek. When they can't, uh, we we're not sure how we can do this scientific <clears throat> inertial dampness. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But they still do it. <laughs> they they engage in yeah. doing it. I think I think what defines science fiction is whether you you bother or not to come up with an in-world explanation even if it's sort of flimsy maybe it's not as much as hard science fiction as another thing but once when you care about the science or at least a a, a pretense of a science uh, i think it applies why in star wars hyperspace uh, lightsabers no one shows up to explain to you oh it works i mean they could and in the canon you can find explanation explanation of that but but it's not a part of the the narration i find yeah i i, I like i like the two differences between them both to be honest oh, it's, with, it's, uh, it's not I a like judgment uh, it's... star wars and that it's not going too techy because of the type of age that they're trying to hear where star trek you know, it, technology is a major part of it. It's all about technology. You know, that's that's almost their style to it. So, it's I it's think they're like you said, they're completely. Different, which is why you can't compare them. Yeah, it's a, Star Trek is more not just a science, but it's more a work of anticipation. Of course, we caught up with history to to a large part uh, because the in the original canon of Star Trek, the the story start somewhere in the seventies with the. Uh, third world war and things like that but it's a work of anticipation so it's not just also the science it's about oh human society <laughs> would evolve and engage differently on a social economical philosophical level i guess mm. 
Sorry, I'm getting distracted every time. I'm a chicken myself. He's been fed now, so he should be a bit quieter. Uh, I apologise, he's teething at the moment. So uh... Uh, Another thing I find funny with Star Wars is the, the last few times I ran it, um, I used to play a lot of Star Wars in the late 90s. And the, la and the last few times I ran Star Wars, I found out sort of the hard way that we have caught up with Star Wars. You know, most yeah, of the... Sorry? We have caught up with Star Wars in terms of technology ah. level. Uh, most of the stuff you see in Star Wars, we are beyond that. I mean, except space travel and having a, a, an actual functioning blaster. So, so it's retrofuturism. So when I, and the problem was when I had players coming to Star Wars, uh, they starting thinking of, oh, I'm going to use the droids like I use uh, drones you know, for surveillance and stuff like that. Or uh, I, I go to this place to find information. Okay, I hack in the system. Uh, the Holonet is like the internet. And, or I take my spaceship and I make uh, satellite views of the planet, even though they're, they're smugglers. So I had to come up with an explanation of saying, look, it's not the future. It's more World War Two in space. So <laughs> what what you can do is akin to what you could do in World War Two. For some reasons, all the optics, the screens, you know, the 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 lenses, the the binoculars, the the satellite and cameras you have, they all suck. <laughs> they're very bad. They're, again, they like World War Two. Your 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 binoculars. So you you cannot have satellite views or all this stuff and your computers are the same sure you got a computer but it's not a network computer which can do a lot of stuff i guess it's a computer like in battlestar galactica it's a bit like that yeah yeah which is games completely another different type of sci-fi battlestar galactica yeah and that's tricky you just don't get it though, do you? It's just like, We're gonna yeah, check. whatever you say. <laughs> have you have you tried any online role playing, or did you find the time for that? I wanted to, but by the time I checked uh, the available games for the IP RP Haven, they were all booked up, or there were games I was not massively interested in playing. So I was like, okay, maybe next quarter. <laughs> I do want to try, but I just didn't get the chance, really. I woke up too late and lost all the available spaces. We've um, we've literally invested quite a lot of money into um, some little clever bots and upgrading our Discord servers at the moment to put every one of the branches online and people still be able to play like they're at a branch. Um, so... When that's running at the same time, I've not had a chance to actually join a game because usually I'm in the background directing people. It was like a meet and greet, but on Discord, where it's like, hey guys, yeah, what room are you in? Right, you're over there, right? Drag you, dropping you into that room. That's your room. That's your table. <laughs> and it's so I've not had a chance to, but um, a friend of mine, Ben uh, from Lewisham Branch, has actually just told me about a, a Lord of the Rings game that he's running on Monday, uh, which he's used in our Discord. So I might be jumping on to playing a bit of Lord of the Rings. That would be nice. Cool. It's uh, Is there the option, uh, because I know some club did that and some Discord server, can you go and listen to a game without playing? It's uh, a good thing, actually. I never really thought about that. Um, I don't see any harm, as long as the GM and the players don't mind. I think it's, it's, it's down to consent, really. If people don't mind it. I mean... The, the technology and the server's all there now. I mean, we've literally maximum upgraded, high sound quality, everything. Wow. So uh, it can take, like, easy 50, 60 people in those channels before, probably even more, before it have any issues. Um, so we, we've really, like, invested into Discord to make sure that people can still get their RP because they're at home. Um, we're literally about to, uh, we're looking at it right now about having a virtual, a permanent virtual branch online. So if anyone's familiar with the RP Haven, we have branches all over London, the UK, et cetera. But we can, with everything going on, let's have a complete virtual one permanently. So we're going to have a virtual one online where we can hopefully raise money for charity as well at the same time. And, um, you know, we're looking at 
the NHS for sure. You know what? Those guys are heroes at the moment. All essential workers are. So if we can do our bit, give everyone a bit of online role playing, and at the same time uh, support a charity, that would be awesome. So if people are stuck, see, I think we can, if you don't mind, put the link in down there or something. Right no, there no, where no problem. The, the link to the and, role play uh, event, you mean, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not on the website. I'll give you the Discord link. Um, but yeah, it's um, and it's completely free to use at the moment. I mean, you need membership to book into some games, but then the memberships, you're, you're supporting the, you know, the idea of virtual sites could be supporting the NHS, which is awesome. And then you got little donation bots that come up. You want to put extra donations in? You're not forced to do anything. So uh, I'm sure you're. So I veered right off that topic there. But yeah, I'm trying to gain. <laughs> I'm sure you're using. Usual... And plug in the. Uh, Virtual role playing. <laughs> Your usual partners at Mind, uh, the other charity is going to have uh, pretty much their handfuls also because, uh, uh, in addition to the, the work of the NHS, uh, uh, mental health at the moment is uh, seriously under strain uh, for a lot of people. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's tough out there. It's all about you. Have you been doing any uh, online gaming at the moment? Uh, quite a bit actually uh i guess i'm playing more at the moment than i, I did before the quarantine uh, because at the quarantine i would do at most maybe one game per week but was more every two weeks or so something like that uh i'm playing tonight uh with the my very first proper tabletop role playing group uh from belgium uh the, the my yeah my first game master there uh, he's running several games per week and because of the quarantine uh, he decided to run them online and he was starting a new table and since he was starting them online he's, he said well uh, he tagged me and a few other people who don't live where he lives so so yeah uh, through uh, this odd turn of events uh, I am playing with uh, my very first group we're playing um, Chronique Zoublier which is a mm -hmm. a French system. Uh, it's kind of Pathfinder-ish, but not quite. Uh, I guess, I guess it's a bit. No, I don't know. It's it reminds me a bit of 2D20 without the me the momentum mechanic. Uh, there, there's this kind of okay. mi mix of uh, somewhat rich in skills, slightly crunchy, but with traits at the same time thing going on yeah, and yeah. the campaign is a is a campaign which they wrote in the late 90s uh for delta green and they re-released it for for their new system but it by re-releasing it they reset the setting to 2016 so you play fbi agents getting out of school uh and you you start your your assignment just after the election of Donald Trump when he's not uh he's not the president yet but he's got he, he got elected already and uh, so it's it's all about corruption we are shadowing a the senator of Louisiana where we're going to be affected uh, he's involved in a corruption thing with a, a weird cult involved on the side so you can tell that it's going to go sideways in the it's kind of a, a bit like fbi take on a true detective i guess something like that uh in the world of delta green uh and then i'm i'm gonna start running play tests uh demo d demonstrations of the game i am developing uh, because i found a way to do so online uh and then on on thursday i'm playing with french podcasters uh, I'm going to run my game and last week I tried a game called Becoming which is quite cool you it's you know you got GMless game on one hand this game is yeah, sort yeah. of GMless but it's the opposite because you got three game masters sort of instead of one so one player plays you need four players uh, the, the number is set one plays the hero and the hero is going to sort of succeed survive no matter what but the yeah, idea yeah. The, the, the author calls it a drama simulator because right. the the three other person they play the what is it called the the park you know you know have you ever seen uh, if you know Greek mythology of if you've seen uh, the Hercules Disney movie 
you've got and you see them in many mini popular stuff you know those three women who weaves the 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 fabric of destiny so you, you got those three so you play the three beings who weave the destiny of the hero so uh, yeah, yeah, and you, yeah, yeah, the yeah, three yeah, of yeah. you's got different roles and the three people playing them have turns playing different ones and doing different things but uh, you def you explain oh the situation is that uh, then the second one says okay the situation is that but your challenge is this and if you fail this will happen if you succeed this will happen and then the the hero does more stuff and the third one uh, s tells oh it's resolved based on the on the rules it's called becoming and uh it's quite cool it's available on the drive through so basically you're creating you're continuously or creating collaboratively almost a story or yeah you oppose are you opposing or is it a collaboration sort of thing well it's it's collaboration but the role of the three game masters are again they, they cannot kill the player but it's intently the the point is always to give crappy choices to the player. So, uh, and and it's how he kills himself. Yeah. So it, it's it's making t tough decision. Like the first three scene we played, it was a, on the outside of a spaceship. Uh, the player was the captain of the spaceship, and he was with two characters, and we said, okay, uh, this happens as a meteor shower you can best success you save the the two people and the equipment you have which is uh, very very important for the survival of the ship and then depending on the rule you could save one two one or two of the people and all save the equipment but at some point it was okay you need to choose are you saving bob <laughs> or richard <laughs> And they were, oh no, I like Bob and Richard. Or what? What am I gonna do? Uh, and yeah, when you have to pick, <laughs> you have to pick who's gonna survive. It's quite cool. I think I'm gonna buy it. I think I'm gonna try now. You know the thing of um, you buy games you don't play. I'm gonna try to only buy games I've played now, <laughs> so so I know how to run them PDF without reading them. Well, is it on PDF that game? Yeah, yeah, it's available on Drive Through. I'm gonna post the link on um, in the chat room. Yeah, yeah, please click. It, it does sound really good, actually. So I might have a little look. Well, I, I could run it for you. That could be nice if you want. Yeah. It could be laid back. We just I might actually get to play on the game for once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we, 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 to be honest, my, we never my gaming together. at the moment is pretty much uh, online gaming. You like Conan Exiles? I'm playing a lot, which she hates a lot, and <laughs> using that as my role playing escape. As, so it'd be good to actually play a proper role-playing game. So, Federica, what game did you wish you could have joined uh, at Roleplay Heaven? Was was there something uh, which interested you? Was, I'm trying to remember because at the moment I have the memory of a goldfish myself. But I think there was a D&D &D campaign because I play D&D &D on and off. I kind of like it, and it was the the game that I would felt. More, not even more comfortable, but it, I would have been interested in playing between the ones available, but they were all fully booked, <laughs> solid. D&D gets booked up within literally five minutes uh, on the RP Haven. Since you put a game up, gone. I mean, we even had a branch at one point that was running like five D&D &D games, and within minutes they just, they just get booked up. d d is so, so crazy popular at the moment. Yeah, I, I was yeah. actually, you, you know, I'm running the London Dungeons and Dragons Facebook page, which is just that a page. There's nothing, there's no club, there's no oh. tables behind it. But I do get messages from people, oh, I want to find a game, I want to find a D&D game. And I, and I always send them to Roleplay Heaven and London RPG community and, and mm. a few other clubs when, when they are in specific locations. But uh, yeah, that's I why... I think things are really exploded on D D for us with because uh, we get a sponsorship now from Wizards of the Coast. Um, so they've sent us materials. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you? <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> Gone already. <laughs> no. We, 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 we've got um, Wizards have been directing a lot of traffic to us as well because uh, of the sponsorship uh, that they've given us and 
kindly donated insane amount of role playing books to us. Uh, we, we did a, a video unboxing not long ago of just one of the boxes, and there was like 40 RPG books from Wizards in that one, and that wow. was not even half of the boxes. We were like four or five cases of boxes of D&D that they just send, and every new branch they do, they're going to be sending more books to to get more people involved. They're doing big campaigns at the moment to really pushing it in Europe. Um, so I, they got winning products. So... You know, no, it's a good idea what they're doing at the moment by pushing it more out. And I believe other clubs have got similar sort of deals coming through as well, so it's good. Yeah, it's the same at London RPG community. You often have a, a virtual queue because you can put yourself on Meetup as a, in the waiting list if someone cancels. Yeah, yeah. And you got sometimes waiting list with seven, eight people waiting in line for other people to ca cancel. But yeah, my advice when when I get contacted and I send people to World Play Heaven or London RPG community, I tell people, you know, if you don't find a D&D game there, don't wait. Sign up for another game. I and mean, often they're shy yeah. to, but I tell them the fastest way for you to get into even a D&D game is getting on another game. <laughs> Because then you know people, yeah, you're in the loop yeah. to join the, the next game which will be coming, rather than wait, 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 wait until D&D &D is available. No, go try something else in the meantime. I think the, the big issue at the moment is this, uh, a lack of GMs. Oh, all right, calm down. <laughs> um, it's a lack of GMs out there at the moment. Um, you know, there's a lot of players, not enough GMs. Obviously, if you've got more GMs going, then you, get, you can have more players, there's more games going. And I've often said in this industry that there is a lack of support towards you know, I feel people shouting at me now with a publisher saying, no, 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 we put, we put a small little section in our book, but I, I disagree. I think publishers need to be pushing a lot more to helping GMs and encouraging people to become GMs. I don't know what exactly how at the moment, but they, they need to push to help the GMs and get more giving confidence for people to run games. Because if, if there's more of them out there, then you're going to get more of your player base out there. You spent years trying to push me into GMing and never yeah. succeeded yet. So yeah, oh, even come I haven't on. succeeded yet. Yeah. What would you... I think I asked you the question at Dragon Meat uh, in one of our episodes. What would you game master if you had to? Uh, in an ideal world... Hang on, hang on. You did run. I got you to run at the RP Haven. Yeah, well, I run a GMless game. <laughs> fiasco. She ran a fiasco. Yeah, it's Don't still running. A... Yeah, you still GM'd. <laughs> so, well, yeah, in an ideal world, uh, probably Savage World. Oh. But it's, I see it as a very difficult in the sense that you have so many rules and exception and variation and powers they'll change the main rule and you need to be confident to run that yeah, a really good idea to doing a fiasco game running through was it black Adder? the black Adder fiasco yeah your black Adder fiasco which I thought was a great idea have you ever so looked into I, i've got a well. book which is supposed to be i believe run with own or is it something else Hmm, maybe I'm confusing things. Have you heard of Ashes of Valkana? Yeah, I have uh, heard of it. Yeah. Uh, Rings a bell for sure. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's using um, Savage World or not as a system. Because I got the book, but then I, I realized that it was lacking the core book with the rules. It might be another system, actually. Uh, anyway, I haven't played... Yeah, no. the book, but it's the wrong book. <laughs> yeah. You both bought the and not the core book. I think Critical Role ran, ran some uh, Savage World using uh, for Deadlands. Yeah. So you could... Yeah, that's the uh, one the main campaign I played was the um, Deadlands. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting universe. Uh, did oh, I, I, rem I remember asking you also, Federica, if you had any Italian role-playing games to recommend. Did you find any new ones since I interviewed you? No. Yes, um, I, differently from the last time we spoke on an interview, I, uh, I'm now following some um, RPG pages, Italian RPG pages, and there are a few very interesting projects. Um, there is one that just went on Kickstarter that is about getting kids into role-playing. Cool. So they 
did, uh, I think, a couple of years of uh, playtesting and events in schools. And they now went on Kickstarter to um, to publish their book, which is geared for kids, I believe, 6 to 14 years old. What? And that it is a very interesting project. Kids and Dragons is called. Kids and Dragons, cool. Yeah, there's a thing we, we had to talk about that with David. It's interesting how there are few opportunities and places for children to play uh, in the UK, actually, in clubs. Because clubs like Role Play Heaven, you're, you're very welcoming, but the venues where you operate, as far as I know, are not open to kids, are they? No, I mean, the big area where we struggle as an organisation is is to, to operate where we can give a facilities for everybody that's affordable, because we don't make a lot of money. We, we charge people very small amounts of money, £2.50 if they're a member. And, you know, you got about 30 people. It, it barely covers the rent of the facilities, even with the discount that we get. So it, it's, it's, you know, we always charge, we always pay. We've got the rule. Even we get pubs going, oh, we'll do it for free. No, no, we'll pay because it's part of helping the community. And it, it, we can we, we do struggle to get venues. And we, we're looking at, going to community interests, not community, like community centers. But the problem with the community centers we find is, is they close so early. Mm -hmm. So for example, we start at seven o'clock, can't do it at six because people are traveling back from work. So we start at seven and then the community centers want to close at 10. And you might mm -hmm. say, hang on a minute, you got eight, nine, you got three hours of gaming. Very, but you can barely fit a session. You can't really fit a good session into that because it's usually you've got to take into account people being late. So you, you don't properly start half seven, sometimes eight. So it's, it's a constant struggle trying to get the balance. But what we have done is in, in the Plymouth, we've got um, the Plymouth branch has, uh, which is part of the Roll Together, which is our charity franchise, they have got a kids club. So we have actually now gone down that route where we, we're looking at do, having kids clubs, which we are hoping to introduce across to London uh, with using uh, better venues and earlier times. So it is something we're looking at. We're trying it at the moment with Plymouth and hope if it continues going uh, going well, it'll be with London and then cross to the other branches in Wales and up to Scotland. It's not easy and it certainly was was not a, a criticism of the role play event. It's just, it's a cultural thing because uh, I don't know, Federica, maybe you, you will have memories of Italy uh, like that, but in Belgium, France, and Germany, and Spain, uh, the sort of... I did not realize before moving to the UK that a pub meant a public house, and that the the back room of the upper room of pubs are places where uh, the women in situ, the, a number of organizations that's where they meet, like even the political organizations uh, in France and Belgium and most continental countries, those types of meetings take place in community centers. So that's why they, they're available for free and they remain open later. And that's why one of the thing, whether it's a sewing bee or a craft shop or a role-playing game club or a hobby a model making a club like I was part of uh, as a teenager, they, took, they take place in these many public spaces which are made available by, by the community and the government. But yeah, we don't really have such things have... in such numbers in London. In, in Italy, probably just as in France, the pub is a place where uh, teenage, I mean, probably still teenagers and university people go out just to party. And from my memory, this kind of community activities are often organized by the church, having a space where people can congregate and do meet weekly meetings and things like that, or by community centers. It's not, you, you definitely don't go to a pub. We don't even have pub quizzes or anything like that. Pub is just to go there, eat and drink, and that's it. To be honest, it's got a lot more relaxed in England. When I was younger, you generally couldn't go into pub unless you were strictly 18 and or 21 it's got a lot more strict I mean, it was strict then and i feel it's got a lot more relaxed now i think we maybe we're updating in the times but, but it's, it's hard i mean even when you're running role-playing games and pubs you know 
you get all those people coming up to you and hey what are you doing you're playing D D. what's that and ask yeah well we're playing this and you, you explain it once and then the second person and the third person comes over oh my god can you, you leave me alone let playing, me go yeah. you're not playing half the time so it's kind of why I've, I, I try to avoid pups in some respects I've, uh, a private area facility so people can be much more relaxed and so they can focus on quality gaming which is kind of an important thing well that's why it's quite interesting to see with the quarantine more people playing online because uh the experience is not the same but it still opens a lot of possibilities which you cannot have if you need a physical space where to play yeah I mean that that but might be one I, um, like, funny enough um, quite many years ago um, I ran a uh, I, I built a forum and it was PHP forum technology and uh, I ran a game on that and it was All Flesh Must Be Eaten which is a zombie apocalypse game and uh, I love my zombie stuff especially <laughs> the rock playing game and um, I told everyone right when you're joining this game none of you are allowed to tell anyone that you're playing in this game it's got to be completely secret so when you create your character on the profile you put your character name in your avatar is your It's a picture of your character. So they're in the forum talking away. And what he did is, is did a big picture map of Croydon. I basically Croydon is a book. Hey, Croydon's the most appropriate place for a zombie apocalypse, surely. And uh, I took a photograph of it. I think I used Google Maps, photograph of it. Where did you start? Right, you're starting in a shopping center. So I created a forum for the shopping center where that player starts in. And then uh, another one started somewhere in IKEA. Um, so they, they were over there and then I had a map on my wall following where they're moving and I said right you need to do one post in 24 hours that's the restrictions we little dice rollers and all these guys they're all my friends close friends and none of them knew they were playing this game they, they kept the secret and they're all exploring around Croydon and almost like in a real time but in a forum and then when I met each other I combined the forums so they're together And I had no idea if they were talking to me or somebody else. But I told them I created NPC accounts <laughs> as the profile. So I didn't quite tell. But the great thing is, is that the level of RP on this was amazing. Because they weren't, you know, like I said, me and you RP'd for years. And then suddenly you didn't know you were playing with me. It, it changed the dynamic. And it was an incredible game. And people absolutely loved it. It was so much work. <laughs> really so much work. But it worked really good. It was very enjoyable. And that was kind of my first experience of uh, online gaming, role-playing, using that. And obviously now it's all Skype, videos, and virtual things. But I don't know. I, I thought the forum worked amazing. And then at the end, the big climax uh, for the final finale, I got everyone to come around my house. And uh, so everyone's going, oh, you're playing a game. Oh, you're playing it. And I had the pictures of their character and then um, with a little piece of paper on top of it. So just before it started, the big reveal, I'm playing blah, blah. And bear in mind, we've been playing for about six to seven months. Wow. So, yeah, it, it was really, really enjoyable game. Really enjoyable. And um, we, we started, we created our own forums, did many games like that. And it was called the Awakening Forums back then. Yeah, there's crazy things and, yeah, and, and but what I find interesting you know uh, I was mentioning my playtest that I found a tool to run it because uh, at f when the quarantine started uh, I had started playtesting my game but when when the isolation started I was like I cannot run it online because people need to be handed index cards they need to be able to write on the index card and give it to somebody else so uh, yeah. i cannot do that on roll 20 i cannot do that on Fate fantasy ground but then i found another software uh, last thursday uh, so now i can do that now, there's a lot of stuff which are there for work and i see tabletop rpg fans f finding out about them or sharing them with people like oh i use that at work we could use that for roping him so The tools are dramatically improving right now. And then you got stuff like technology. I've seen videos of how now you could... Uh, and it's it's brand new, so it, it could become more affordable so, uh, over the years. But on the chat room, 
you can have a deep fake of a person over yourself. Like I could be speaking via the Zoom to someone and I could set it up to a non playing characters would be I don't know Robert Downey Jr. and I would look like Robert Downey Jr. and he would be moving his lips and eyes matching me in real time. I mean the, the, you can have people yeah. things would change voice. I think you it could become really weird and, and interesting uh, in the in the future. I think what people really want to do when you're doing a role player game, you want to try and create it virtual, realistic as possible. So anything that can help enhance your role playing game to make you that individual the better. And I often thought, backtracking back on Star Trek, a holodeck deck would be awesome if you could have your own role playing game through a holodeck. deck because you can just program it in a holodeck deck and go, all right, this is the scene I want. It's going to fight the dragon now. <laughs> You know, and you can have all of that because that's what they're doing. The holodeck is a role playing game. Yeah, definitely. In Star that, Trek, it's LARP slash Nordic LARP slash tabletop role playing. I'm gonna have to go because my son is up and he's impairing the productivity of my wife. Uh, do you have anything else you need? You want to plug? And where can people find you if you wish to be found? Do you got anything to plug? <laughs> Some advice, maybe, to people stuck at home. <laughs> One last message to the world. <laughs> no, I mean to be honest, I've, I've done all the plug I like to do. Like, if you guys are stuck at home, trapped in in a cage, like I'm feeling at the moment, and you want to do some role playing games, uh, we'll put the link on here that Jeremy's been currently share. So you can come on the discords and you you can have fun and do some role playing games. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that's my main plug, to be honest. Um, we, we've got lots, we've got a virtual branch coming up soon, so that's going to be quite exciting. And we we'll would encourage everybody to go for that and raise some uh, money as well for the NHS, for all the awesome work the NHS has been doing for us at the moment. So, um, yeah, we will have all that coming up soon. You can follow us on the uh, www.rbhaven.co.uk we'll announce all the stuff on there and on our Facebook pages uh, with all the exciting projects coming up and um, we've got stuff going on with Mindjammer Press soon we've got a new site that we're going to be launching uh, to sell PDFs and some physical books so uh, keep an eye out and follow us on Mindjammer, uh, Mindjammer Press as well Awesome Federica? No more questions for me. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'll definitely be posting about uh, the opening of the your online branch as soon as more details are available. And uh, I'll probably have you back or somebody else from the roleplay event to, to tell about it, which would be great. Get Dave. Get Dave. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting this now live. Dave has agreed he'll do next time. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, so much noise in my side. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, see you on yes. Wednesday. Bye. We're gonna be with Eric Neudon, uh, who is a French tabletop RPG designer who lives in Highland, who developed uh, Macchiato Monsters, uh, which is available at Lost Pages, and he will be joining us uh, next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yes, bye. bye.